Hey everybody and welcome to another tutorial brought to you by the Minecrafters. I'm Captain Jack and today we're going to be talking about the Advanced Information Panel and Advanced Panel Extender. Now if you watch my video on the Advanced or the uh, in Industrial Information Panel, um, you'll know that these blocks are really cool. You can put a lot of information on them and we'll talk about how to do that in just one second. But first I want to see how to craft it. What you're going to need is four gold cable, a lime die, a carbon plate, and three glass panes for the extender. And for the main advanced information panel, you're going to need carbon plate, advanced circuit, a lime die, and two gold cable along with three glass. And the regular industrial information panel, um, which is kind of a separate video, um, is just made up of some ink sacks, redstone, electronic circuit, lime, and glass paint. So this is a little bit harder to make. Um, the advanced panel extender doesn't actually do anything on its own if you place that block in the world you cannot click on it um, you cannot interact with it it must be adjoined with a regular advanced panel like this they look very similar um, and then once you put this panel extender down it's just going to join up these blocks and it has to be um, in like a rectangular or square shape in order for it to connect all those things that's pretty pretty self-explanatory you can make some pretty big screens with this block. Um, this old one here, you can see how it looks. It's wooden and this one's a nice sleek black color. I really not like it. Um, again, you can't interact with, with this part of the block either. Uh, but what's different about these two things is there's a lot less options in here. And basically if you wanted color on your panel, you'd have to make a color upgrade and put it in there to give you that option. Um, if you want text, because there's no headline by default in here, you'd have to build, put a text card in there and so on and so forth. So this is basically a really basic version of the block that we're about to go over. And there's a lot of different options um, that you can play around with inside here. All right, this uh, block comes with uh, some really neat built-in features. And we'll go over a couple of them right here, not all of them. This, uh, These Roman numerals, 1, 2, and 3, basically cor correspond to 1 here, 2 here, 3 here. And if you press them, it'll bring up the information on those cards. So I have an energy card here, a liquid card here, and a text card here. So if I press one, it's going to give me, it's going to tell me that I'm adjusting the energy and what information is going to be um, showing up on the panel. Here it'll show me the liquid options, and on number three, it opens up this option here and allows me to type in text. So that's what these do here. They just correspond to which cards are inside the panel. This is a spot for a range extender. We'll go over this in a second. This is uh, a built-in color mod and that will allow you to change and adjust the color of this thing without building a color upgrade. Um, so you can make some wacky colors and do all kinds of stuff with that and it's really cool. Now this power option is something that's really awesome and unique to this block. It will allow you to turn on and off the advanced information panel without actually having a redstone signal. And you can choose to bypass a redstone signal or you can choose um, to actually need a redstone signal to turn this thing on and off and all situations are useful. Basically, there's four options. This is the default option, and that's set to basically off if you apply a redstone signal to this block with this selected, or just on default, it's going to turn it on. If you take away the redstone signal, the block's going to turn off. Here we have inverted, so if there, if there is a redstone signal applied to the block, you see it's on there, um, it's going to shut it off. And if I go ahead and grab a lever, we can kind of demo this real quick. There's no reason not to. Okay, that shut off that one over there too. Um, so there, that's inverted. So when there's no redstone signal, it's going to be on. And when there is, it's going to be off. Okay. Plus mode means basically you can't turn it on or off even with a redstone signal. And minus mode means you can't turn it on. Okay. So there we have it. This is just a regular default mode. And so on and so forth. Okay. So these are all the options inside there. And again, that last one is just for the text card. And we'll talk about this one next. When you put down the block in the world, um, it's just going to be a single block. And you can tell the difference between these two by the little icon on the top here. These are extenders. Again, you can't click on them. But if you place one next to it, it'll connect. And we're going to place a couple here. Okay. If you open up this and press um, this button here, basically this is um, adjust the thickness and the angles, both uh, vertically and horizontally of this block. And this is a really neat feature. So you can make this block really thin and you can kind of see it changing behind me. So I got it like a half uh, thickness here and I can make it all the way down to almost nothing. And with that, you can make it so it sticks on walls really nicely like that. I really like that feature. Let's make it bigger again. All right, here is uh, the angle again on uh, kind of a horizontal basis. It'll adjust the angle back and forth like that. 
There we go. So you can see it moving behind me. And this will adjust the angle um, just like that. You can go that way. You can go forwards. And you can even make some really crazy angles and bend this thing around. Actually, we'll go this way. Okay, you can put it on really, really wacky angles. So you see I have this one kitty corner here, and that one's the same way, and I have this one kind of facing down towards me. So if you have a big uh, panel up in the sky and you want to see what's on it, then uh, you can just face it down towards yourselves. That's a really neat feature of this block. Next, we're going to talk about all the different cards that you can put inside of these, and there's uh, ooh, six cards, I believe. We're going to start with the liquid sensor kit. Now, basically what this allows you to do is detect what liquids are inside a uh, liquid container um, and how, how full they are and we'll go, we'll go through all the information real quick here. So what you need to do is craft a, a liquid sensor kit and that's made by a piece of paper, a bucket, and a frequency transmitter and to make that you just need a copper cable and an electronic circuit. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hold these in your hand and right click on a tank. It can be any kind of tank. Um, you can put railcraft tanks, uh, MFR tanks, whatever you want. And what that does is it makes a card for you. And this card is going to recognize the location of the block that you that you clicked here. So if I was to put a pipe down and uh, use a sensor kit on it and then break the pipe and then put a pipe back, it would still remember that there was a pipe there because you refilled the block. So it's it's remembering the space in the world. And that's why it has the coordinates there. Okay. So if you take this and put it in your information panel and put it right up top there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to know that there's oil in there. And that's really cool. It's going to tell you the amount in uh, millibuckets or whatever it is, MB. It's going to tell you how much is free or how much space is remaining. And it's going to tell you the total capacity of the tank that you have there. And it will tell you how, fill, how full it is. So it's 68% full. Now, if I was to press this, basically, it's only going to give me the numbers up here, which is really hard to, uh, it's hard to determine which one is which. So for something like this, you might not want to do that. So let's keep them uh, disconnected like there. Here you can adjust um, what kind of information is shown. So if you don't want the fill, fill percentage or capacity or free, you can just put um, there's 33,000 millibuckets of oil in that tank. Another benefit of um, these panels is that you can put three different cards in it, and this is going to hold true for all the cards that we click. So if we do um, oil or uh, what is this, fuel and then water, we can take both of those cards and we can put them inside up here and it's actually going to display all the information for all three of those different things and we can scroll through if we just want liquid name and amount for all three of them that'll clean up the board a little bit there we go so we have oil water and fuel and it's going to tell us how much of each is inside these tanks so that's the liquid sensor kit next is the remote sensor kit and this one's for nuclear reactors and this is very useful if you're going to be doing anything nuclear. It'll tell you uh, how hot your reactor is, how much uh, heat it can take before it blows up. And basically all you need to do is uh, get your nuclear reactor, right click, and you're going to get a reactor sensor location card. Put that card inside an advanced information panel, and you're going to get a whole bunch of information about the reactor. It's, going to, it's off right now. The max heat it can take is 10,000. It starts melting at 8,500, and uh, this will tell you how much power it's outputting and how much time is remaining on the uranium cells or whatever kind of cells that you have inside of there. And you can also adjust the information shown here. Okay. Yeah, I just took all the information out. Okay. And you can connect up to three reactors, same thing as uh, the other one to this block, which is also really neat because uh, before you had to make one information panel per reactor. And again, this recognizes the uh, space in the world where this block is so if you delete this block it's gonna say um, target not found just like that okay next we have the counter sensor kit and I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and grab uh, MFSU let's get a couple counters here basically what this does is it measures the amount of energy that passes through this thing called an average counter and uh, if I set up an MFSU here all three of these uh, quantum generators are set to output a different amount of power. And if we click on them, we can see that. The top one's putting out 32 EU per tick. The second one's putting out 128. And the third one's putting out 512. Now note that I have transformer upgrades inside of here. And that's uh, because they would blow up if you don't have them there. So this is two will give bring you up to high voltage. Um, one will bring you up to medium voltage, even though I have two there. And you basically don't need any for the 32 EU per tick. 
So this is filling up, but uh, say you want to see what's flowing through these blocks, you're going to take this counter sensor kit. We'll click the top one here. You're going to get the counter sensor location card. Go ahead and put that inside your advanced information panel. And it's going to tell you that there's 32 EU per tick flowing through that block and that block only. If you go ahead and grab another one, you can also put that information inside of there. And it's going to give you both outputs. And if I grab one more, you can do a maximum of three. So there you go. That's the counter sensor kit. Next, we have the energy sensor kit. And this one's just a little bit different than the other ones because it has one more available option. option. What, I have, what I have here is a bunch of MFSUs and they all have a different amount of power inside of them. And what this energy sensor kit will do, it, it will monitor the amount of power inside of uh, whatever storage or power storage unit that you have. So I went ahead and right clicked on this MFSU here. Okay, you can see it has 72,637. If I go ahead and put this inside of here, it's going to say it has 72,637. How much space is free? And these can hold up to 10 million. That says it right there. And it shows you how full it is. Now, there's not even enough to make it show 1%, so that's why that's like that. And you can go ahead and adjust these to um, bare minimum information. And you really only need that, but you can set it to however you want it. And you can also um, put a bunch more or two more cards in here to tell you um, how full a bunch of these are. Now I have I have nine here and there's a lot and I need to know how much they all have in them. Well that's where this energy sensor um, energy array location card comes into play. So let me grab the information off this one here, this one, this one, this one, uh, we'll grab this one, we'll grab two more that one and this one okay what you can do with these cards is is inside a crafting slot you can put up to six of these cards together to make what's called an energy array location card and it will know how many cards that you've added into this slot here and the maximum is six if you put another one in there it disappears and then if you take this and we're gonna go ahead and put this in here to make a two quantity you can go ahead and put this inside of your panel and this is going to give you a absolutely monster amount of information so we're going to want to narrow that down just a little bit not by doing that um, let's do total energy actually we want summary on both of these cards that might be total combined energy that's pretty cool oh each card info there we go There we go. So that gives me the information on all of those. And this one's it's a little bit separate down here. So there you go. That's nine cards. All right. So that's pretty cool. Um, you can make this array location card. And that's the only one you can do it with. Next, we have a, a few random ones. We have a text card, range upgrade, and time card. And this text card is basically what I have been using to um, put information in all these things here. Um, text card, you just drop inside of here. You can select um, that button there to bring up a huge amount of text, or you can you can uh, put a title up here. I'll say hello, and then once you start adding adding text, hi. There we go, Captain Jackal. Okay, and you can put a bunch of lines of text in here, and the more the the wider it is in this grid here, the smaller it's going to become to fit inside the constraints of your panel. Okay, and then you can go ahead and you can change the color or whatever you want. You can make it all kinds of wacky, wacky colors. Okay, and that's what the text card does. The time card basically does exactly what you would think it does. If you drop that in there, it will tell you the time of day. And you can shorten that up by using this option here. And uh, that'll give you the Minecraft time, in-game time. All right, so that's pretty cool. Next, we have the range upgrade. And the range upgrade is um, something that's, I don't know why I don't have any of these in the block here. The range upgrade is something that you can place inside this right here and it looks just just the same. And this will increase the range um, at which you can retrieve information from. So if you had a nuclear reactor way down deep underground and you wanted to monitor the um, heat and how much energy it's putting out way above ground, you're gonna have to put enough range upgrades inside of it until it can reach and find your nuclear reactor. And that goes for any of the other liquid 
energy or counter sensor location cards. Now one of the things that is also different with this advanced information panel is that you have the ability to, to put multiple text cards inside of here and uh, basically what you get is an absolutely massive amount of text space so you can really really write a lot of stuff inside uh, of your panel there and that's a pretty neat feature oh let's see again there it is okay last but not least there are uh, two more things that I want to show you oh the awesome is over here okay I'm go with the awesome which is uh, pretty much on lockdown here yeah, okay, so this is a really, really big screen, and I have it hooked up to um, Redstone, Vanilla Redstone, which made me want to, never mind, it's hooked up to Redstone. And you can apply a Redstone signal to flip this thing on and off to display information. You can hook this up cleverly to many other different types of uh, blocks that emit Redstone signals to maybe give you a little bit of information when a signal passes through the block. Okay, um... That's basically it. You can also... Oh. We're actually on top of the world's tallest cactus, and we're going to jump off. Any of you that saw the last episode, there, jump to the Oasis of Awesome. Okay, and that's basically it. Um, you can put these blocks in the ground, too. Okay, so you can... Uh, I don't know why you'd want to do that, besides if you were going to make that. That's basically it. That's the advanced information panel. Not much information out there when I release a video. I um, hope this helps you guys understand this block and exactly what it does. Don't forget to uh, check out our channel, um, subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, um, and check out all of our social media outlets listed here. As always, guys, stay poised.